Seven years ago this month, the Deepwater Horizon oil rig exploded off the coast of Louisiana. You're probably familiar with the incident. You might have even seen the movie. But just to recap, 11 rig workers died in this explosion, and 800 million liters of oil leaked into the environment, making Deepwater Horizon the worst marine oil spill in US history. Now, if you go out today to areas that were heavily affected by Deepwater Horizon, like salt marshes in northern Barataria Bay, just south of New Orleans, you can actually still find oil deposits just beneath the marsh surface. This is seven years later, remember. Now, as you can imagine, this oil layer can negatively affect marsh vegetation, like smooth cordgrass pictured here, as well as species that spend most of their lives in or on the soil, like marsh periwinkle snails, that feed on fungus uh, farmed on smooth cordgrass, and southern ribbed mussels that form these dense community clusters within the root systems of smooth cordgrass. Now, these three species are actually major key in maintaining the structure and function of salt marshes, as well as the valuable services that they provide us, like storm surge protection and commercial fisheries production. So you have to wonder, does the chronic presence of oil affect these three species and the interactions among them? And if so, could the degradations in these community systems be contributing to the coastal land loss crisis? My crew and I, the Wetland Restoration Brigade, we're going to try and find y'all some answers. <laughs> in a field manipulation experiment, we're comparing communities of smooth cordgrass, marsh periwinkle snails, and southern ribbed mussels in five heavily oiled salt marsh sites and five unimpacted reference sites in northern Barataria Bay. What we're doing is at all ten sites, we're establishing four different treatment plots of smooth cordgrass. Those with just cordgrass, those with mussels added, those with snails added, and those with both added. What we're expecting to find is that heavily oiled marshes are still under stress, as indicated by reduced vegetation growth, reduced invertebrate growth, reduced soil strength, and increased impact of herbivory on marsh vegetation. What we're also hoping to find, though, is that mussels aid salt marsh recovery. One, by these hair-like systems of, uh, called bissel threads that anchor and attach them into the soil. And also by boosting plant production by fertilizing the soil through nitrogen-rich fecal deposits. What this can mean is that mussels could be used as an indicator species for future oil spills. Additionally, if mussel transplants aid in marsh recovery, we can, we can develop the transplant of mussel spats into a marsh restoration tool, much like we already do with vegetation planting. We're conducting this experiment throughout the growing season of 2017 and really looking forward to our results. I hope that now y'all are too. Thank you.